Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I have a return visit from the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. And since I've already done a first look review on this, I'm not going to do that again. So what I want to do in this review is look at the things that I didn't have the chance to look at the first time around. So I want to look at what this vehicle looks like at night. I'm going to check out the Macintosh sound system, and I'm going to tell you what I don't like. So let's take a closer look right now. To do is talk about the sound system in the Jeep Grand Cherokee L and you'll notice I don't have it on right now but I do have a passenger so this is my husband so say hello husband hello husband <laughs> and he is much more of an audiophile than I am and so I figured I would let him talk about the audio system because to me music is just background noise and something like the Macintosh audio system is going to be completely lost on me. However, like, he was totally geeking out over it. So, tell me, husband, what did you like about it? <laughs> the quality, the crispness, the, just the fact that I could turn it up as loud as I wanted and the music wasn't going to crack the speakers or the car. Yeah, so there were several times I'm driving and all of a sudden the sound would just go, and I'd be like, yeah, what are you trying to do to me? Um, but he was right. Uh, the speakers didn't um, crack. There was no visible crackage. Uh, but also, what I thought was really interesting is the sound quality didn't really lose anything. It was just louder. And very often when you turn the, the sound up, um, it's like, you know, it vibrates. So, um, and you, you pointed that out to me. And of course, like I put him on video and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not exactly as much fun when you don't have any music on to describe what you're listening to and how you're listening to it and what you're looking for. I know. Blame YouTube for that because we can't put any music on this. Otherwise, we will get a strike from YouTube because copyrighted information. Um, so I was trying to think. There were there were a couple of other, thing, other things you were telling me about, like with the clarity and um, like even like the breath of hearing somebody like when they were singing. Here, yeah, so the ability to hear somebody as they're taking their breath in to hit the next line or to hit the next phrase, song, or not song, but hit, hit the next note, what, whatever. And also when they're changing instruments, you can hear it going from drums to guitar, back to drums, back to a voice. Just really cool, crisp and clean. So of all of the sound systems that we've been in in cars that you've been in with me, how would you rate this one? Oh, this is by far superior to anything else that we've ever been in. Like far, far superior? Oh, far, far superior. Okay, so if you're an audiophile and you like the sound of music, this Macintosh sound system is 100% worth the money. And um, you didn't hear it from me because, by the way, like I said, music is just noise. You heard it from him who actually likes music. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> While I have my husband on the line here, I figured it would be a really good time to talk about seat comfort because I do that a lot. And I'm only about five feet tall, I weigh 95 pounds, and um, I have a very different opinion than, you know, somebody who's 5'8 and weighs... 190 pounds. 190 pounds. So <laughs> I figured it might be a good idea for both of us to talk about this because we just drove back and forth to Indianapolis. So three hours down, three hours back, spent a lot of time in these seats. And my first look impression was very favorable. I thought the seats were comfortable and that doesn't change. I will say the one thing that I discovered in the long drive that I really like, seat massagers. This is the Overland trim. So this has the seat massagers in it and I really like those. But now, how do you feel about this passenger seat? They're comfortable. Um, they're wider than I'm used to, which is nice. They're not completely enclosing me, which, you know, on a leather seat, I like that. So I do want to point out that he lifts weights. So he is probably a little bit wider than somebody who doesn't lift weights. And <laughs> sometimes he'll get into a seat and he'll be like, who is this made for you? Um, and yeah, but so the fact that he says that this is comfortable means that it's going to fit somebody who's a little bit more on the wider side of things. Not that I'm calling you fat because you're not fat. You know. All right, so we're going to pop into the second row, and we're going to check that out, because I had him adjust the passenger seat for his comfort, obviously, and I want to see what his knee room looks like back there. How does this feel? 
feels fine. So these seats to me feel a little bit stiffer, obviously, than the front row seats do. Um, but I will point out there are HVAC controls back here as well as heated seats. So that would probably make me happy in the long term. And um, obviously behind me, I basically can like, I can extend my foot. This is me with my leg out straight uh, behind my driving position. But you have plenty of knee room there and you feel okay? Yeah, this is good. No, I could probably sit back here for a three hour ride and take a nap. Okay, so by the way, I'm going to point out that this guy can sit on a plane in an economy class seat and will fall asleep before the plane takes off. So I don't know that that necessarily means anything. Oh well, Yeah. maybe. <laughs> right, so now I'm gonna make him I'm gonna make him pull a Jill and we're gonna climb into the third row. Okay, this is gonna be funny actually. Notice how easily she did that. <laughs> hey, he did it. Um, all right, so now we are sitting in the third row and um, I'm gonna point out his shoulders are definitely a little bit wider than mine, but we're both able to sit back here without you know, too much of the shoulder bump going on. Um, there's a little bit of an armrest um, on the outboard sides and it's actually soft. It's not hard plastic. So I kind of like that. And um, tell me about your knee room. Uh, knee room is good, not great. If you put another dude back here with me, there's no chance that we're going to be comfortable or not knocking <laughs> shoulders. Well, maybe just not a dude as wide as you. Good luck with that. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Otherwise, it's not that bad. Him, behind him, behind him. Um, he fits... Would you Would you want to spend three hours back here? No. Okay, so would not want to spend three hours back here. I could spend three hours back here. I'm like... <laughs> I have room to slouch. You're comfortable. I, I'm fairly comfortable. And I will say these seats are probably about as padded as these seats here. So um, the, the front two seats are going to be the most padded and the most cushy comfortable. Um, and then it these four I would say are probably about the same. How do you feel about this? So his knee pops up off of the the um, bottom seat a little bit. How does how does that does that make you uncomfortable? No, it doesn't bother me. Okay. So I tend to make a big deal about, you know, your knees popping up off the seat, but if he's not bothered then maybe it's not a big deal. No, not at all. All right. Cool. All right. So that gets into the seat comfort. Next we're going to take a look at um, what this vehicle looks like at night. Now I want to take a look at the Jeep Grand Cherokee L at night because that is definitely something that we can't do when we are doing a first look drive because, well, it's during the daylight. So first thing to note is I really love how well detailed and outlined everything is in terms of the lighting effects. So first you have this the outline on the cup holders, which I think looks really cool. Then you have, you know, this nice highlight on the gear shift and all of the words are well lit and very well defined. And I especially love the fact that your USB ports are highlighted as well and your auxiliary jack highlighted. And this little 12 volt input jack highlighted. So it's going to be really easy to see at night if you need to hook up any kind of a device in the vehicle. I also really like just the way that everything looks. So you also have this really cool ambient light going on and it lights up around the ring of the vehicle as well as in the footwells. Now the really cool thing is when you go into your apps, and I'm going to point out there is just a little bit of lag here because I do have my phone synced to the system and uh, then it is also uh, trying to record. So there is gonna be a little bit of lag that you don't experience when you are not doing that. Okay, so now we are in the apps and you can hit the ambient color and you can see that you can choose either, you know, different colors for the upper or the lower. So you could have green on the top and then you know, maybe you're a Michigan State fan, you could put white on the bottom. If you're an IU fan, you know, maybe you want red on top. Michigan fan, why would you do that? But you could do blue and yellow. 
So I, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool that you can customize that a little bit, or if you just wanna, you know, be boring like me, um, you can match them up and make them samesies. Now, you don't have the opportunity to create your own color. There's not a huge color palette, but I think that these colors are appropriate. I think they look good. And I like the fact that you can customize the upper and the lower bits. All right, so overall, I think this is pretty attractive in terms of what the interior looks like. Let's take a look at the exterior lights really quick. And before we go to the exterior lighting, I just wanted to show the ambient lighting also goes to the rear, and I think this is really cool. This has the Macintosh audio system, which we've already talked about, and uh, it, <laughs> this lights up. I think that's really neat. So you can also see it on the other side of the vehicle as well, but I think that's cool. Oh, and I should point out, these things light up too. So overall, really like the interior lighting at night. Now it is always really hard to show exterior lighting at night because things reflect weird, but I wanted to try and give you a good idea of what these look like. And again, with the LED headlights, it's kind of hard to see them clearly, but when you turn on the blinkers, you can see how it looks. That daytime running light up at the top turns into the blinker light and that looks pretty cool. So let's go around to the back really quick. And you can see you've got some texture here and your standard light there. But I like the, the textured look to the blinker light. It doesn't change colors, it's not orange, it's actually red. I don't know if you can tell that from the video, but overall, I think that <laughs> this in general looks pretty good. that I did not have the chance to look at during the first drive and that was going to be the active driving assist functionality. So in order to turn it on, you hit the button on the wheel and it's on, it says ACC ready. So that basically means your adaptive cruise control is ready. Then you have to hit the set button. So I'll hit the set button. Now it is set, it is modulating my speed. Somebody just pulled in front of me, the car slowed down, so it is modulating my speed. Now this vehicle also has steer assist functionality, and to do that, you have to hit another button on the steering wheel. And when you hit that, then you'll notice there is green everywhere. So there's green on the edges of the cluster, there's green in the center of the cluster, and there's like a little green steering wheel both on the lower right corner as well as um, on this little gauge display here, it's telling you the steering assist is active. Now, this is not a hands-free system. This is a hands-on system. And as long as you keep one hand on the wheel and the wheel detects it, it is good to go. This is also not an attention-free system. This means you have to keep your eyes on the road as well while you are driving. Now, when you take your hands off the wheel, it gives you about five seconds, not even five seconds, before the steering wheel turns orange, both in the center and in the lower right-hand corner. It's telling you, put your hands back on the wheel. So, use this system driving to and from Indianapolis, and I really liked it. Not only is it good in stop and go, situation so we're, we're slowing down here and the car is appropriately slowing down it's not you know jerking me to a stop it's not doing anything crazy it's just slowing down the way I would slow down um, but the steer system a steer assist system is not aggressive so it's not actively jerking the wheel out of your hands it just steers and stops the way you would want it to so this is one of the better systems i've encountered and i really like the fact that it is a hands-on system there is no confusion here keep your hands on the wheel pay attention to the road now that we've seen what the jeep grand cherokee l looks like at night and we've looked at the highway drive assist functionality i'm going to tell you some of the things that i don't like on the jeep grand cherokee l so Here's the thing, in a first drive review, you only have a couple of hours behind the wheel. So you're not really living with the vehicle for any length of time, and it's really hard to come up with those things that might annoy you over time. However, when you get the vehicle for a full week long test, that is where you find those things. And while there isn't a lot, and I don't think they're deal breakers, there are a couple of things. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and let's check those out. 
So there are really only a few things that I don't like about the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, but let's, let's start with this right here, and that's fuel economy. I have about 500 miles of highway driving here, and I'm only getting 16.1 miles per gallon. Now, EPA estimates you should get 22 miles per gallon on the highway, but I did not get that. Combined driving, however, is going to be 17 miles per gallon, and yeah, okay, that's a little bit closer to that, but you would think that 500 miles of highway driving would affect this just a little bit more. And so that to me was a little bit of a disappointment. The next thing that I don't like is going to be this right here. And this is what I like to call a black hole vortex blind spot um, because you've got a chunky A pillar combined with this big side mirror, which yay, big side mirror, but it's all connected. And that means that if you go up to a crosswalk or a four-way stop or something like that, you cannot always tell if there's somebody who's getting ready or has already started to cross the street. You gotta do a little bit of this to make sure you are really getting a good view and you can't just do a quick peripheral look to make sure that somebody's there. So this needs some work. Now, the other thing that I don't like is going to center around this infotainment system. So. We've looked at this in detail in the Jeep Grand Cherokee review, and I generally like the home screen and I like the easy touchability of the things that are down here. But what I don't like is going to be the fact that, okay, you can no longer customize this, but you can customize this. However, your options to customize this up here are really limited. That's it. That, those are the only options you have to put up here. And yeah, I, maybe I want access to the Macintosh audio system app and I can't have that. That to me is just a little bit annoying. Instead, what you have to do is you have to click your app button and I've added it to my favorites, so it's there. But like, say you get into all, you might have to scroll through to find some of the other apps here and that to me is a little annoying because if you add everything to your favorites, then that kind of defeats the purpose of having favorites. But really, I just want more flexibility of options, things that you can put up here. Now, the last thing that I don't really like about this, and yeah, I'm gonna say this vehicle is from the redundancy department of redundancy because yeah, you have your HVAC controls here, you have this comfort button here, to pop them up here and then you know say you're on the media screen and you hit that you have them here so to me this is just a little bit redundant to have them in all three places so really if you're going to have hard controls i don't understand why you're taking up valuable space on this navigation with a comfort button so that doesn't make sense to me and I don't like it. But I have to say overall, if you've got this, this, and this as the big things that I don't like on this vehicle, hashtag winning. All right, that's it. That is all I have on the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. If I had to close this out, I would say this is a very comfortable vehicle for a road trip. You can fit six people in here, absolutely no problem. You're probably not gonna be able to fit all six people's luggage, but you can fit luggage for four, also no problem. But for the long haul, this is really comfortable from both a petite female's perspective and more of an average male's perspective. I really like how it looks at night, and um, even though there were a few things that I didn't like, none of them are deal breakers. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com. And I will see you down the road.